Hello everyone and welcome to another Warleader PvMP video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Update 10 and I'm going to be showing some small group fighting. I'm also going to show you my new build which takes advantage of these wonderful crit rating corruptions that we've picked up in this last update. Getting criticals is just a major benefit because we get plenty of mechanics that go off of critical hits. Uh, the big one obviously is Power of Fear which is just gigantic and enormous and huge. And then the second one would be the Shield Bash resetting. Uh, other criticals are just extra damage, and really it's just gravy for us to have extra damage. So that's why I trade two crit ratings. And uh, the final point to mention is crit rating increases the chance of getting a critical with our heals. And when our heals crit, well, that's when we really get a, a nice big chunk of morale infused. So really, there's nothing to dislike about crit rating, and so that's why I've gone with it. All right, enough about all of that. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, first fight, this is actually from Update 9. This is not from Update 10, uh, but we'll just kind of go ahead and show it just to kind of do a little bit of compare and contrast of how it the war leader tends to run in the small groups. Uh, as you can see, this is a war leader heavy group with a pair of black arrows as well, so it's all rooks, all of us standing much taller than our opponents. So, you know, we're already up on the intimidation factor. Yeah, whatever. Alright, so um, in small grouping, target picking is definitely one of the biggest, most important things. And if you get the right targets, put them down quickly, that it makes all the difference in the world. And hunters, they are at the top of the target list because it, when it comes down to the small group, nobody does more damage than the hunter does, and no one is more vulnerable creep side than a hunter is. I, this, the next on the list would obviously be the lore masters because lore masters have so much utility and everything. I was actually slow there with the the bubble and all that so he went down which was bad of me but we have almost got Karsten down and once you take out the lore master that does take out yeah, a lot of AOE damage a lot of debuffs and effects and it takes away that spammable little heal known as water war and with no water war really everything is gonna get mopped up pretty quick and of course the last things that were left standing are three wardens and one champion. So the champion is actually the squishiest target, and now that is down to just these wardens left, this is basically going to go pretty quick. Um, all except for the fact that they are wardens. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to beat them down, but they are going to be finished off. But you know, as you can see, commander stance very useful. Uh, Having at least one war leader in commander stance is a big part of success in small groups. Uh, it's even more important, I would say, than in raiding to actually have people in commander stance. And on top of that, to have the right person in commander stance. Because, I mean, if you've got someone in commander stance constantly under focus fire, they can be effective if they're getting crits, if they're built like a tank, which I managed to pull off to a certain extent. But if you get somebody else in, in commander stance while somebody else is taking the brunt of fire, tanking, all that wonderful stuff, then that is where you really see them shine because that war leader will carry the healing load for the group and keep them all on their feet if they're doing a good job of it. And as long as everyone stays within range of that wonderful little AoE heal. Yeah, right, so we've got two of the wardens down, just onto the third. And man, wardens in Update 9, they were pretty tough. Uh, the first thing I noticed off the bat, aside from power issues and how wonderful the new crit rating trait was, is wardens got squishier with this new update. Now, a big part of that is just that they've switched from having might to having agility as a primary stat, and They've got to relook at you know, what what their stats are and how they're building and all that stuff, but it definitely has affected them and it's going to continue to affect them. And we, we're not going to see how they actually shake out in terms of this whole agility change until we actually see what they're like after update 11 when they fully make it to the new agility warden. As for right now, they are on a hybrid. <coughs> all right, on to the next fight. 
and uh, this one is going to be a little while. We we were waiting an ambush for an equal sized group of freeps actually. Unfortunately, we were a little slow on them, and uh, right before we started, I had said go ahead and engage. So we have one of our wargs way out in front. Yep, there, Addy got that daffodil. So we managed to pull the one of the minstrels off. The rest of them will be coming. They're coming back for. They're coming back for. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, there are two minstrels, one lore master, a captain, two captains actually, and there's a third captain. So it is actually, I, 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 everyone in this group heals for the freeps. Uh, compared to that, we've got two wargs, a spider, one black arrow, and two ward leaders. So we are definitely the much heavier on DPS than they are. Uh, they've got a lot more healing potential. But uh, assuming that our two war leaders actually do a good job of keeping themselves and everyone else alive, then things are going to work out. Now the first thing that you probably noticed right off the bat is our power bars are not moving. Right, this is probably the, the single biggest, most noticeable thing about this. Ah, Burglar came out of stealth, so it was actually seven there. So that's where their da damage was. Unfortunately, he just exploded. And uh, they're risen melee again. But uh, the the power bar is not moving is wow such a big change. Uh, Bees was very very good with that bubble there, cut me right there. But uh, I, here's what just kind of what I was talking about uh, in that last fight. You got one war leader who is me. I draw a lot of fire. I'm a very big target running around. Hey, look at me! I'm a Jenna. Shoot me! Chase the Jenner! Go for the squirrel! And I'm in brawler stance, so I keep moving, I keep on healing, I want to hit that. Brawlers quit whining and fight every chance that I get. And basically, I just be a, a great big target out in their faces and get them to shoot at me. And then Bees stands back, he's in commander stance, and he's pumping out all the healing that keeps everybody else topped off, keeps me alive, keeps me on my feet. Uh, he just got me with, I think, get a grip. That might have been uh, Chris that pop pop that get a grip in either case that was very very timely and I, I would have gone down there without that last second heal I still have my quitters ready to go but I haven't managed to actually get it off yet if I can get a crit there we go then I'm gonna be hitting quitters in very short order I believe Though right now I'm trying to get us focused on sweetie which for some reason, I'm not coming through. I I think I had my frap setting record to a, a different key for when I press it. So <laughs> sorry about that. You don't get to hear me talking for all of this, which is a bit of a shame, because it will help me remember what exactly I was doing. Uh, one minstrel flopped. Dagger is in war speech and attacking a, the, the thistle down, and we've had more wargs show up, so that has really tipped the fight in our favor and taken care of things. But no, as you can see, you don't need to stack quite as heal heavy as these freeps did to be successful, as long as you've got the right people in the right jobs and you manage to pull it off. We, this worked out perfect just because they they had the right idea. They go for the war leaders. They picked the wrong war leader. They went for for me because I'm the rank ten, I'm the big scary one that they know, and uh, that was just the wrong choice because it was the other guy that was our main healer and who was going to be pumping out everything. And now that they finally notice that, it's too late. There's not enough of them standing, and I can go right into commander stance, rock and roll, bring everything that I've got to bear and focus, and it's just not going to end well for them. Aldrich there was trying to get another res off, which they have had a lot of in-combat reses. Like, they have a lot of resing power with their three captains. That's six reses right there, plus two from the minstrels. So I mean, they, they do not lack for resing capability in combat, and they certainly don't lack for out-of-combat res capability because any one of their members could pop a res, except for the burglar. And uh, once a dagger goes down, that should be the end. Well, no, Haldrit's still up, isn't he? And Zerg Lord. But once we get those two down. Ah, oh, looks like Daffodil did come back up. Man, it's just not going fast at all. <laughs> they just keep popping back up. So, I mean, now they're actually doing a good job of all moving around to healing, showing just how survivable they can actually be. And, you know, Freeps, they got tougher. There's no denying that. But I think the big thing to note is that we got tougher, too. 
particularly those crit rate corruptions. Because when you just looking at this, obviously this fight's going on longer, but I'm getting way more crits way more often. And my build, I went down about 1,200 morale or something like that. I, it, it's I used to hit 27,000 when I have or had a defensive aura on me, whereas now I hit 25,000, which is what I used to have in aura of command. But I don't feel like I've lost anything. I mean, I also lost a little bit of base damage, but I've picked up so much from crit rating that is it is not even noticeable. I, I consider the trade completely worth it. And look, look at that string of shield bash crits just right there, and I'm still going on this one. There, another crit. So that's uh, five, actually, I think. Alright, there we go. Now they're all down except for Zerg. And once he goes down, that will be the end of them. Fortunately, we did have... You know, the, unfortunately, kind of, we had those extra wargs that showed up, so I do go ahead and jump them again. I managed to catch them in Bear Valley. No extra monster players around. It's just going to be the six of us versus whatever they've got to bring. And uh, at least for this fight, they are not going to have as many in-combat reses because they've had them all run out. And so Palomarca has revealed himself. Uh, I immediately want to get everybody focused on him as fast as I can. Except we do have... You know, melee up as well. The, da the damage that they've got is gonna come from the Lord Master and from the Burglar. The Burglar is the squishier of the two, for sure, but it's important to drop those two first. Uh, there's there's no linchpin keystone healer in this particular group, whereas sometimes in a raid you do find that. And uh, now we've got a Hunter off on the side. Hunter immediately is the first target, and he takes off running which is fortunate for us. If he were to stick around, uh, you know, th there's a lot they could potentially do. They could be throwing bubbles with the captains if they've got that traded, and if he were to get three bubbles in a row timed out correctly, that would really mess us up, because a hunter standing there continuing to open fire for 45 seconds would pretty much ruin and wreck our entire group. Uh, actually, I've had to go into commander stance now, because they're actually splitting their damage up, and I wasn't putting on enough healing while I was in Brawlers. Now, we, we are only two healers for our group, so now it is basically both war leaders in commander stance, full heal mode, put everything that you can out, and we're, we're responsible for just keeping everybody else alive, and they're going to do the damage, they're going to do the killing. We'll pitch in where we can and how we can. Which, when I get these crits, you know, War leader crits are more burst and spike damage, which I, yeah, oh, I can't believe that I, I missed my opportunity. If I'd done black speech a little bit earlier, I would have had Melly killed already because she was at 700 and I could have gotten a, a crit and easily wiped that off. All right, so looks like it's time for a double heal. I yep, missed it. <laughs> Alright, one thing that we're not doing a very good job of, we're not doing a good job of keeping both War Leader banners down, which is a loss because we're missing out on 10% uh, damage boost for everything. Well, it would be nice to have that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because we both got the same banner down. I No, it's gotta be because we've only got the one buff and both banners are there. Uh, we're doing a good job of keeping our other banners down, although Horror has come off cool, then I do want to go ahead and put it down and you know put more damage down there we go horror is down so we're actually gonna be inflicting more damage upon our opponents and they're still beating on me time for double heal double double oh and down I go of course we have another war leader all right so they've gone ahead and they have popped multiple shield of the dunadines and I, there I finally put down the command post, so now we have our 10% damage boost. And I've gotten back into my healing mode, ready to pump out some more. And they're already back on top of me. Oh, 
definitely for these kinds of fights, small group, it, it does tell just the, the ability that we've lost with our brand changes. Because the brands, they, they function just as a breakout of crowd control on a pretty long cooldown. There's no tail immunity, they don't give you one minute of immunity, they're useful in combat. And, you know, we've definitely lost quite a bit because we have to take a lot of crowd control. And we can't just brand up and, you know, soak up all the CC that they throw at us. I finally identified Haldrit as a target that we should definitely go for and we're actually putting some decent damage on him for, finally although he's actually going back up because daffodils back up as well which when we can get a minstrel to flop that is definitely the time to try to put some fire on the captains if you can find a squishier captain taking them out will do a lot for just benefiting your entire group it's gonna remove a mark on somebody it's gonna take away some healing and extra buffs and stuff and it takes away reses, all kinds of things. The other nice thing is when you actually kill Freeps, a lot of the buffs that they run around with, particularly the scrolls, those get eaten up when they die, and they have to be reapplied. Which they can be reapplied in combat, but they're not going to be reapplied in combat. <coughs> Alright, there we go, let's get a grip. And melee has come right back from the res, because we are just you know, at Bear Valley, and we're at the GV side of Bear Valley, right at the entrance there. So it's not a very far walk from GV. Far enough to keep it from being just like a right on top of their res fight, but definitely close enough to easily return when the fight drags on for more than a minute. Here we go with quitters. Looks like that heal did go off, although I thought it was going to be interrupted at the end. I guess I got silenced first and then stunned. Barely survived that right there. I got my heal off and got a big heal from bees as well. But I do go down. Which his res has already been taken care of, you know, used so... I I really need to go ahead and release and just map right back, which I do go ahead and do that. I cut out the time that's in between, and I map good TR, and I'm running here. Unfortunately, I don't make it in time for bees to actually get some heals, but I will be able to res him, except that he has released. Alright, I went ahead and inducted one heal off, and going ahead and deploying banners. I really need to take this shot at melee because I did go ahead and pop the power, <laughs> the call of the shadow got resisted but I did get my crit there and that was just enough that we were actually able to put her down. So now if we can just get on Palomark and take care of that burglar that will deal with a lot of the damage that's coming in. Palomark's already actually very low on morale and it looks like he's used up his uh, fine footing cooldown, so he's not going to have any bonuses there, and he should be dead. Yep. Alright, Bees has also made it back to the fight. He mapped back as well, so we've managed to stabilize. But uh, certainly, <coughs> being only two healers, not having our banners coordinated very well. I mean, we were coordinating the uh, drops with the Banner of Terror alright, but not having... Uh, good job, not doing a good job of keeping the command post and the point defense down together and in the same spots so that we're all getting the buff definitely has hurt us. So we shouldn't have had as much trouble with that fight as we did. Uh, we made things harder for ourselves. Not to say that the Freeps didn't work very hard for what they pulled off. Man, they definitely gave us quite a fight and run for our money. Although they are finished off now. Imagine that. That looks like Dagger made it back to the fight again, just in time to get killed one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and try to steal the killing blow. Alright, to take my shot there. 
take a second shot, and I'm going to try to go for the shield bash. Didn't get there in time. And that's the end of what I have recorded. So unfortunately, I didn't record some of the other fights. Uh, the next fight, we did have a couple others. Uh, we did man we did get wiped out. They brought a hunter to the party, and that damage from the hunter, actually being in the group, staying with him and attacking, completely overwhelmed the healing output of our two war leaders. And then what we did was one of our wargs, who uh, you probably saw in the chat window, asked if we should get their defiler. We got their defiler, and we came back, and with the two war leader, one defiler healing combo for a small group, that's really as good as it gets without sacrificing too much on the damage. He is 50% healers with two of them being war leaders for the double buff, double banner, all that wonderful goodness. With that, we were able to take on the that particular free group pretty handily even with the slight number advantage. So small grouping, still very much viable, still very much present. Definitely takes plenty of skill to be good at it and it, it more important, it, it takes having the right people with you because you're just a member of the team and although your actions, particularly as a war leader, are gonna be a major influence on what happens, you have to rely on your teammates at the same time because you're not going to be putting out the damage that gets people killed. You'll put in your dents that you can. You'll take away a, a big chunk when you get a crit and you open up a hole for the Reavers to get a dev strike, for the Black Arrow to finally get a chance to use revenge, stuff like that. You can knock them just far enough that you open up those special skills. And that's what you want to set up as a war leader. Anyway, uh, update 10 still going on. We'll still continue to see the Freeps get stronger as they get more jewelry and all that stuff. But for now, things don't look like they are terribly unbalanced, and it looks like we're going to have some great fights and uh, some good PvP throughout this particular update of Riders of Rohan. Anyway, I'll see you guys out there, and you'll be seeing more from me. But in the meantime, good luck and have fun. Ugmong is out.